Good morning, folks. Top story today will be this. I waited as long as I could to pull these images this morning so that we could get a full release sequence for the news. The filament was erupting over the last three hours, and beyond these images and a 100% guarantee of a CME that could be mostly heading left away from Earth, I can only promise to update you at a later hour today on Twitter, follow us at the link below this video, and we'll also be updating at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to dive into it here, so take a moment to get your eyes and ears open as the solar tornado dances a goodbye to the Earth-facing disk. It's come to spaceweathernews.com to find solar flaring beginning to rise into higher sea range. These are mostly coming from the departing sunspot group, which has grown and complexed quite a bit in the last day and a half, popping those flares. The incoming sunspots are maturing as another umbra crests into view behind them to the left. We're mostly focused on the blue and red interaction at the northern end of the trailing umbras. Solar wind speed slowing enough to create more of these bunching effects with high density readings that are not due to any solar event in particular other than its weakening. Earth's magnetic field is calm this morning. So the coronal magnetic fields continue dominating the northern positive openings, leaving the southern negative more open to Earth. The earthquake watch shall begin rising soon at quakewatch.net, but it will have less to do with coronal holes and more to do with the planets. As Mercury is exiting solar conjunction, it will conjoin Saturn on his own conjunction trek towards the end of the month. At the same time, the Sun will watch Mars and Jupiter conjoin. The entire system could come alive for a few days. Tropic Watch begins with Rick south of Mexico and heading west. Given him and the storm forming to the east, the OLR anomalies over Central America make a lot of sense when combined with the volcanoes going off there as well. Could account for all the readings, but I'm also interested in the anomalies cutting up to Canada here, especially given the potential foreshocks we've seen overnight in that exact location. Other storms include Ian Fa next to the Philippines and a lonely little cyclone candidate churning southward in the Indian Ocean. The October Global Climate Report came out this week. The usual top events are on the usual graphic and there are some good maps showing the extreme temperature swings over mid-range timelines both over land and over the water. Let's update the snowstorm cutting across the U.S. with records falling from the Rockies across the Midwest and down through Chicago to head further east now, from record highs to record snow in less than a week. The low-pressure earth spot responsible is in eastern Canada, and the storm line on the eastern convergence is moving offshore while the counterclockwise wind drive is making it colder in the south-central states than it is in parts of Canada. Whoa. Low pressure earth spot cuts down between Italy and Greece in Europe, and that's where we find the worst storms here. Down under, the same low is in focus. Another sharp contrast to recent record warmth is coming. We're featuring the earth spot situation in the southern Atlantic, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.